Five years have passed since the dark figure moved among the citizens of Blackstone, distributing the gifts that brought madness and death. Each month had brought a new gift and a new tragedy. A doll, a woman's locket, then a cigarette lighter, a handkerchief, and an old-fashioned stereoscope. The public never learned the identity of the dark figure, but somehow everyone knew the old asylum was at the center of the tragedies. People got on with their lives. Oliver Metcalf, son of the last asylum keeper, married Rebecca Morrison. A year later, they had a son, who has since remained blissfully ignorant of the evil that has plagued his family. Now, the State Historical Society has renovated the asylum and plans to open it as a museum of psychiatric history. Malcolm Metcalf, the last superintendent of the asylum, was my father. The last time the old building was disturbed, my memories of him came alive and I became the dark figure. This time, I pray to God he will leave me and my family in peace. Welcome back, Oliver. It's been almost five years. Hello, father. What do you want? Look around, Oliver. Do you know where you are? It's the old asylum, but it doesn't look like this anymore. It's all been changed. You disobeyed me, Oliver. You never finished the task I set out for you. I did more than I should have. Nonsense. Your task was simple. You were to seek revenge on the families. You've killed enough people, Father. Can't you leave me alone? No. First, they took the asylum from me. Now they plan to turn it into a museum. They must be punished, Oliver, starting with that woman you married. You should know better than that. I won't do it. The son disobeys the father, eh? Perhaps I'll have better luck with your son. Joshua. Who are you? Grandfather Malcolm. I thought you were dead. Oh, 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 oh no. Come along with me, Joshua. I know some good games we can play. Okay. You see, Oliver, I mean to have my revenge. Perhaps you will see things my way before the night is through. I'm sure young Joshua will. Dad? I'm scared, Daddy. Don't worry, Josh. I'm coming. I was with Grandpa, but then something happened. Now I'm all alone. It'll be okay, Josh. I'm coming to get you. This is the way the entry hall looked before the Blackstone Historical Society purchased the asylum and began our restoration program. The restoration of the entry hall is now complete, although other areas of the building still remain to be restored. Welcome back, Oliver. Where have you taken him, Father? He's in the secret room. You know where that is, don't you? 
I haven't been in here for five years. You remember, Oliver. You just don't want to admit it. It's just a hallucination. An interesting hypothesis. Incorrect, but interesting. I assure you, I am quite real. And this is not a nightmare from which you will somehow awaken. Why can't you leave us alone? I cannot do that, Oliver. A parent's responsibility to his child never ends, even in death. What are you talking about? You have not been a good boy, Oliver. Not only have you chosen to abandon my life's work, you have also refused to seek revenge upon those who cut it short. What does he have to do with it? Someone must shoulder the family burden. If you refuse the task, then I must train young Joshua, just as I once trained you. You tortured me. Rubbish. I used pain as an appropriate motivational device, just as every parent does. Except I was far more rational than most. I never hurt you in anger, Oliver. Not every father can say that. Bring him back. No. You must come and get him. I believe spending time in this building will remind you of how important our work is, and that it will help persuade you it must be finished. I want you to rediscover the part of you that is buried, Oliver. However, you have only until dawn. If you have not entered the secret room by daybreak, I will give up on you for good, and begin to teach Joshua what it means to be born. A Metcalf. Apparently, they are not quite ready for opening day. It's locked. Paracelsus was the greatest medieval healer of his day. That is Hippocrates, the father of all medicine. I have a great admiration for Freud. He had profound insight into human behavior. Your grandfather was quite the hunter. I never cared for blood sports myself. I liked these couches because they were comfortable, yet didn't allow the patients to slouch. The important thing was that they be too heavy for the inmates to lift. Fewer injuries that way. This is a swivel knife used to slice leather. It is a myth that sharp objects had to be withheld from all patients. Some mental illnesses pose no threat to the patient or his fellow inmates. The awl was used by inmates working on leather crafts. A thin punch like that was perfect for making holes in leather.
nasty looking weapon, isn't it? I always... We encourage the violent inmates to take up painting. No art ever came of it, but it seemed to help calm them down. Restful art is part of the therapeutic process. Some inmates became quite skilled in metalwork, leather crafts, and wood carving. You may think these crafts trite, but they were very important to the patients. Actually, we did have to lock away some of the more destructive implements, a simple precaution. They seem to have changed the lock. I often worried about those exposed hinges, but none of the inmates ever thought of removing them. Not much good without a blade. Mm. Doesn't budge. Doesn't feel cold at all. The kitchen has its own set of circuits. We ran off our own moon wells, purest water you could ever, ever imagine. This was just for spot bar cleaning. The automatic dishwashers are around behind the freezer. I thought I taught you better than to waste water. You'd be surprised at the edge you can put on a knife with one, one of these. It's old, but it looks serviceable. There, much sharper now. Weak, weak ordinary supplies in there. I don't know what the new people will plan to do. Only women did the cooking. The men would use the pans as weapons. Only women did the cooking. The inmates did a surprising amount of the cooking. 
therapeutic and cost-effective at the same time. We use these for making shish kebabs. An essential tool for handling boiling lobsters. Did you know lobsters used to be so plentiful and cheap that railroad workers ate them three meals a day? They got so sick of them they went on strike for the right not to be fed lobsters. Only women did the cooking. The men would use the pans as weapons. Our menus were meticulously planned by trained dietitians. I suspect the patients didn't appreciate the effort we put into keeping them on a healthy diet. The elevator in the entry hall was used only by the superintendent and his special visitors. To ensure there was no unauthorized use, he had the operator's handle locked up in his office each night. In any psychiatric hospital, controlling access is of paramount importance. Each worker had only those keys that allowed him to do his job. Only the superintendent had the master set of keys to every lock in the building. Your mother died too soon, Oliver, but I no longer blame you and Mallory for her death. She's not here, Oliver. She rarely came into the asylum. 
and never formed a strong enough connection with anything to keep her spirit here. I had it custom made in Florence. Your mother loved Italian craftsmanship. That is Donatienne Alphonse, my college roommate. This is hardly the time for a pot of coffee. Louisa Hartwick. She was the leader of the women's volunteers here at the hospital. It was a gift to me from a Russian physician. It rather looks like me, don't you think? That was always one of your favorites. I used to crack nuts with it when you came to play. That was taken on your third birthday. It's you and your sister Mallory. The day you were born was the most important day of my life. Password, Scooter. Hmm. I sure hope they remove this before they open next week. Webster's second unabridged, before they started corrupting the language. Some stains stay with us always, no matter how we may try to scrub them out. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked.
It's locked. It's dark in here, Dad. It'll be okay, Josh. You've got Freddy with you, right? Yeah. Okay, well hang on to him. He'll keep you company until I get there. Okay. Hello? Is someone there? Who are you? I'm Marilyn Wilson. This is my room. Or at, at least it is until I have my baby. I'm due any day now. I'm very happy for you, for you. Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye. That's for the baby. I can't wait until she's born. You know, I do that sometimes. The big, the big one's Tommy and the little one's Teresa. I snuggle them every night. Patients were allowed to keep personal possessions of special significance to them. This cigarette lighter was a gift of Marilyn Wilson's younger sister, Martha. Doctors sometimes allowed patients to keep items that reinforce their fantasies. According to her medical records, Marilyn Wilson spent hour after hour absorbed in this book of baby names, even though she wasn't pregnant. Graduating from high school was the happiest day of my life. Why do they make you wear those things? They look so goofy. That's me with my two sisters, Martha and Margaret. With me named Marilyn, that makes three M's. We call ourselves the Three Musketeers. That's Tommy with his army buddies in Korea. Isn't he cute? That's mom and dad. They're mad at me right now, but I think they'll change when they get to hold their new granddaughter. They're a gag gift from my girlfriend. <laughs> no baby's feet could be that small. Besides, they're blue, and I'm going to have a girl. Hi. Thanks for coming to visit me. Have you seen my cigarette lighter? Why? Is yours missing? Y yes It was a present from my sister. You'd recognize it right away. It's shaped like a really neat dragon. I'd be really grateful if you could find it for me. Tell me about the baby. She'll be born real soon. I say she, although I really don't know yet. But I'm hoping for a girl. Aren't you a little young to be having a baby? Yeah, I know. My, my parents are furious. That's why they put me in here. But when Tommy gets back, we'll get married and then everything will be okay. Is he any older than you? Tommy Gardner. He's my fiancé. He'll be 19 in November. Why isn't he around to help? He's in Korea. That's his picture with his army buddies on the bulletin board. 
With all the money my parents are spending, you'd think they could spring for more than just one lamp. Pages are stuck together. again his name is Joshua have you seen him sorry no I've read that the doctors don't believe you're going to have a baby don't be silly it's what the doctors call pseudosiesis yes but that doesn't apply to me I'm really having a baby Maybe you just want to believe you're going to have a baby. That's ridiculous. Why would I choose to make my parents mad at me and let them lock me up away from all my friends? Whoever told you that is lying. Why did you start writing everything down? It was more of a journal, actually. When I first got here, I wanted to write a story about the asylum. But then I got so excited about the baby that I haven't written in it for a long time. You can read it if you want. What's it really like to be here? It's weird. There's this strange combination of being all alone, yet you're living in a building full of other people. The patients are mostly nice, actually. It's the attendants who act strange. Isn't that odd? But the thing I miss most is my privacy. How can you feel alone with so many people around? I miss my family. My parents told my sisters they can't visit and Tommy is in Korea. The other patients here are nice, but I don't really know them. You've got your own room. Isn't that private enough? Well, first of all, everyone on the staff gets to look at all my records. I can understand that because they might need to know something about my medicine or something. But they go way beyond that. I think they want to make sure I'm not secretly talking with Tommy. Do you believe it? They even steam open my mail. Why do you say they act strangely? Actually, it's both the doctors and the attendants. They act as if the people here aren't really people. They don't listen. They treat the patients like children. It's like as soon as someone is labeled crazy, they don't count anymore. But a lot of the inmates here aren't really all that nuts. Or even if they are, they still deserve respect. I'm sorry. I shouldn't go on like that. It just makes me angry is all. 
two of the diary pages seem to be stuck together. Can you tell me what's on the second page? Sorry, I really don't remember. Tell me about the medical treatments. Mostly they take me down to the hydrotherapy room. I can always tell when they're taking me there because the attendant gets out that big gray key that opens the door. Right now, I don't remember anything about what happens in there. Oh, but that's okay. I'd rather think about the baby. You're a good writer. Thanks. For a long time, I wanted to be a reporter. But now I just want to stay home with the baby when she's born. Hello? M my name is Jane. Who are you? It's nice to meet you. It's nice, nice to meet you, too. Although the circumstances aren't very pleasant. The wrist restraints were used to ensure the patients didn't harm themselves when in the tub or while using other equipment. Although they may have caused some discomfort, they were there for the good of the patients. I hated them. They made me feel like a prisoner. Jet nozzles allowed therapists to stimulate specific body parts with a high-speed flow of water. You take off your clothes and they shoot this water at you. It really stung especially if they just kept spraying in one spot. They wrapped us in those rubber sheets for hours at a time. Epsom salts, but you had to bribe the attendants to use them. I think they stuck the shells just for show. like to be locked up in there. It's dark, it's hot, and you can't get out. Yes? Were you sick? I'm not sure. I, I became confused. I think life outside became too overwhelming for me. I believe they called it a nervous breakdown. I mean, is it important to you in some way? Why can I talk to you when I'm looking at it? I don't know. Except I have a deadly fear of being trapped inside. Maybe that's it. What did you talk about? Oh, yes. 
All we ever talked about was going home. It was the guiding star, the beacon ahead, the goal for which we existed. Home. We talked about it constantly, endlessly. Every day we woke up wondering if that day would be the day. Even a criminal knows when he's going to get out. But we were in prison with no release date, with only the hope of one day returning to our husbands and children. What was it like? It was... harsh. I suppose there was something wrong with us, and they were only trying to help, but it was very difficult. I don't believe anyone outside really knows what happens in these institutions. I suppose they're better off not knowing. What finally happened to you? Oh, I finally got to go home. I don't remember much about that anymore. But I do know that it made me very, very happy. Once it's locked down, there's no getting out. Once a week they made us clean out the drains. It was disgusting work. We scrub those walls every day, but you cannot scrub away the smell of fear. I used to stare up at that window for hours, wondering what was happening outside. It's so heavy, it used to take two attendants to lift it. We called it the Hydra. They'd put you inside and, and put the lid on top so you couldn't get out. Then they'd fill it with ice water. After a while, you'd rather be dead than go back in there. Please don't. It brings back too many horrible memories. You'll never be able to lift that lid by yourself. They'd keep us in there for hours at a time, but it never seemed to help much. Nothing's happening. <clears throat> Must be some trick to it. We scrub those walls every day, but you cannot scrub away the smell of fear. There was a secret code that they used to turn the machines on and off. They never let me see what it was.
I remember now. They killed my baby. Then I killed myself. How can I be dead and still talking to you? I don't understand. Oh, hello. What happened to Teresa? They took her from me as soon as she was born. They wouldn't even let me hold her. And then they, they, they burned her. Do you have any idea what happened to your cigarette lighter? Dr. Metcalf took it. He did it to torment me because he knows it reminds me of my sister. I hate him. It's the only thing I have left. Please find it for me. Please. Dr. Metcalf has kidnapped my son. Do you have any idea where he could be? I'm sorry. We've both lost children to that man. I wish I could tell you not to worry, but I can't. Do you know anything about that control panel next to the steam boxes? The code was supposed to be secret, but that was a joke. They never changed it. All they ever did was flip the second and third switches from the top to on, and then everything would work. Your records say you were making this all up. It's a lie. My family is trying to cover it all up so they won't be disgraced. And Dr. Metcalf is in on it. But my Teresa was born. And she was beautiful. And then he killed her. I think there are monsters down here. Freddy will scare away the monsters, Josh. Just like he always does. He's a good watchdog. Thank you. 
Oh, hello. Your diary says that Dr. Metcalf used to take you into the utility room. Why? That's where he would burn the things that belonged to me. The things I cared about. He said it would help make me feel better, but he was lying. He was just being cruel. Everything that was ever precious to me, he put into that furnace. Can I help you, lad? What are you doing here? I'm just an old Irishman who left home looking for a better life. It's true I didn't starve. But I'm not sure I found what I was looking for. What do you think of it? It is a hard place, lad. And there's not much difference between the people inside and the ones outside who are walking around breathing God's fresh air. And if I were one of those people, free and easy and doing what I pleased, it would scare me senseless to know that. Who keeps things running? Oh, the new lad. The one they have here now. He's doing fine. They'll not be missing old Seamus O'Rourke. Why don't you leave? One day they'll come in and replace all this old machinery. Then it'll be time for me to move on. I could build anything I could. Whatever they needed around here, I used to make it myself, right at this bench. Manny's the hour I rested my old bones there. Get along with you. Find your own place to sit down. They're old and abandoned, just like me. Don't go poking your nose where it doesn't belong. There's nothing in there that concerns you. A temperamental old cow she is. She'd break down in an instant if you turn your back on her. And how far do you think you'd get in this place with no power? Those would be your number three fuses, industrial. We use them for most of the heavy equipment. But be careful with that now. Don't hurt yourself. That's me old lightweight motor oil. It's amazing how long machines will work for you. All you have to do is take care of them. daft lad if you try to figure out where all those pipes go. Leave that to an old expert like me. Nasty business. That water is causing no end of mischief. Careful, man. If you touch that cage or anything on it, 
You'll get a shock, the likes of which would light up all of Dublin. Malcolm hung that there just the other day. Yes, Oliver? Why did you take it? Are you sure I took it? Are you certain it wasn't you? Perhaps the museum people simply haven't placed it there yet. Where did you hide it? Oh, Oliver. You forget my goal. I want you to explore the asylum. To rekindle your old memories. Even if I did take the lighter, I would scarcely tell you where it is. Did she really have a baby? Marilyn was a very sick girl. You must remember that when you speak with her. Maybe you're just a figment of my imagination. It hardly matters, does it? If you are making this up, you have certainly gone insane. Yet if I am a ghost, then your rational world view has developed a few cracks. Quite a problem, isn't it? Old reliable, that one. Not like that sow of a generator. They certainly don't make them like that anymore. It's bolted shut. They're as tight as an Englishman's wallace. From the look in his eye, he was up to no good. I wish I had a pair like this for my grill. Perhaps you were never aware, Oliver, that some items carry evil within themselves. Merely picking up that dragon lighter, for example, has caused you to fall under its fiery spell. Marilyn Wilson burned herself to death with it. Martha Ward used it to burn her house down. Even now, it is propelling you towards some unknown, but no doubt, searing fate. I wonder, Oliver, will you be able to take the heat? trapped better dead than red ninety degrees very clever Oliver well done
Thank you. Don't mention it. Joshua is being held there. Can you help me find it? I'm afraid I don't know too much about the asylum layout. I was only here a short time before I died. But the women down the hall might be able to help you, if you can get them to make sense. They're a little... crazy. The key to the corridor door had a big W stamped on it. It's sure to be on your key ring, so you should be able to open it right up. Yes, Oliver? What made me climb into that heat chamber? The lighter has an evil all its own. You fell under its spell. I don't believe it. That is one of the only two logical explanations, Oliver. The other is that you yourself are going insane. Which do you prefer? I must have set these traps for myself. It is curious that you never seem to be in so much trouble that you can't get out. It's almost as if it has been managed that way. That key opens it right up. Are there bad guys here, Dad? Nope, no bad guys. I love you, Dad. I love you too, Josh. You there. You're new. Did you bring my knitting needles? Uh, I'm afraid for not. Well then, be off with, with them. The tapestries are delicate. Please do not disturb them. Ms. Willoughby was an accomplished seamstress, embroiderer, and weaver, as witnessed by the beautiful tapestries around the wall and the exquisite handkerchief you see here. This is the room of Lavinia Willoughby, whom the staff called Vi. She was severely delusional and believed she was Mary, Queen of Scots. Her family indulged her in this delusion and paid for the special furnishings you see here. Yes. I don't believe we've been introduced. Such impertinence in a servant. I shall have Sir George reprimand you. Who's he? He is my host, if you can call it that. 
What would you do with them? A servant does not question the commands of a queen. Fetch them, please. You are dismissed. It needs a good sweeping. Perhaps it would look better nearer the fireplace. I have everything else I require. I am only missing those needles. I have enough yarn, thank you. If I require more, I shall inform you. It has a wobbly leg. Perhaps you can fix it. It is fine where it is, thank you. You may leave it alone. I am not yet ready to retire. Don't be impertinent. The, the items on the desk are private and do not concern you. The items on the desk are private and do not concern you. The items on the desk are private and do not concern you. The items on the desk... Those drawers do not require your attention. What happened to your last pair? They were taken from me by Sir George. Actually, they weren't proper knitting needles at all. They were curious eating sticks from the Orient. They worked just as well. In captivity, one must improvise. What will you do with them? It is how I pass the time. All the needlepoint and tapestries you see around you, I made them. It must have taken quite some time. I've been here 18 years. Have you seen my son? His name is Joshua. I am sorry your boy is missing. I too miss the companionship of my son. But perhaps you will find the lad while you are searching for my needles. You may go now. in the box with the rest of my sewing things. At last. At last. You are more than a servant. You are a friend. Thank you for providing me the only implements by which my imprisonment becomes tolerable. Why do you call him your host? George Talbot, the Earl of Shrewsbury. This is his castle. He has been commissioned by my cousin, Queen Elizabeth, to detain me. Little does she know that he brings dishonor upon both our royal houses. What does he do? He tortures me. He takes me to the dungeon and uses a key with a skull pattern on it to open a small room. There he forces foul emetics and purgatives down my throat. Sometimes he bleeds me until I am dizzy and become faint. What does he hope to gain? He wishes me to confess to conspiracies against my dear cousin. When I refuse to do so, he opens a special casket he sometimes has with him. 
Inside are vials filled with poisons that give me fevers and chills. Have you told anyone else about this? Only Lorena, the prisoner next door. She's very difficult to talk to, but she knows more than she's willing to say. She is heavily guarded, but the key to her part of the prison has the number 26 engraved on it. Is there anything I can do to help? It is all a horrible misunderstanding. My cousin thinks I plot with the King of Spain against her. If only I could write to her and send a token of my affection, she would realize how wrong she is. Can't you get her a message? To do so, I need a pen and some ink, both of which are currently denied me. It sounds as if you have something particular in mind. I have embroidered a special handkerchief for her. It is the finest craftsmanship, and it has the letter R worked into the corner. And now you can't find it? Alas, Sir George has stolen it from me. I suspect he has hidden it within his casket of poisons. But where that may be, I have no idea. Elizabeth doesn't begin with R. <laughs> I forget you are a servant, unschooled in Latin. R is for Regina, which means queen. I must find him before dawn. Just as you aid me, so shall I aid you. Without ink, I cannot write my cousin. That key opens it right up. Freddy's tired, Dad. Maybe he can take a nap, Josh. It's way past his bedtime. He told me he's too scared to sleep. I'm scared, too. I know, Josh, but everything will be okay. I'll be there as soon as I can. Are you one of Malcolm's spies? Go away. Who are you? What do you want? I'm looking for my son, Joshua. You won't find him here, young man. I'm a friend. I don't believe you. Everyone here works for Malcolm. He is an evil man. Very clever. That's just what one of his spies would say. What can I do to convince you? Very well. I shall give you a chance. Malcolm has stolen many things from me. He keeps most of them hidden away, and some he has given to others. But one of them he keeps on display, knowing the pain it causes me. Bring me that item, and I will know you are not in league with him. It's black lacquer on walnut. Quite attractive. But it shows every speck of dust. They were given to me by my mother. M.M. -M. Malcolm Metcalf?
This locket was the gift of an unknown admirer to Miss Martin. Unknown admirer? It was my father. People suffering from paranoia frequently believe others intend to do them harm, and they devise elaborate defenses against these imagined onslaughts. Miss Martin, for example, always wore these gloves to prevent her enemies from poisoning her through the exposed skin of her hands. Ridiculous! I wore the gloves because I liked them. The inscription says, My dear Miss Martin, Earth has not anything to show more fair. Fond regards, Mark Kendall. I should have been worried from the start. The quotation he selected actually referred to some buildings. Do you want it back? I refuse to discuss that until you prove you are my ally by bringing me the other item we discussed. How will I know when I've found it? It's a secret. The item has special markings, but I won't tell you what they are. Yes, Oliver? Why would you do that? You are being unusually obtuse, Oliver. You should know the answer to that by now. What did you do to her? She is a classic paranoid schizophrenic. She suspects all authority figures are plotting against her. Her fears are groundless. Why did you allow these bizarre treatments? You know so little of my work. You are hardly in a position to criticize. Nevertheless, I will tell you that we had one of the highest cure rates in the country. That which you regard as bizarre was actually highly effective therapy, though not always for the reasons one would have anticipated. It's a Giuliano original. It's from the 1929 Paris exhibit. My eyes are failing. The glass makes it easier to read. Description reads, Meryl, this should keep you up a few nights. Love, Wendy. A gift from my sister. Her sense of humor can only be described as macabre. Just one minute, young man. How do I know that pot is mine? It matches your cups and saucers. Yes, but many pots look the same. There is something special about my coffee pot, and until you can tell me what it is, I refuse to believe you have truly carried out my request. Nothing in there. Malcolm Metcalf? Dickens. I find him wonderfully soporific. I love Poe. He's so mysterious. The inscription reads, Meryl, this should keep you up a few nights. Love, Wendy. A gift from my sister. Her sense of humor can only be described as macabre. It's Florentine leather.
Just one minute, young man. How do I know that pot is mine? There are two M's on it. Yes, anyone can see that. Each period is really a small bird. You are correct. I have told no one here about this, so you must have learned it yourself. My maiden name was Meryl Martin. My mother named me for two of her favorite birds. When I married, she gave me this coffee set and said, you may change your name, but here's a small reminder that you will always be my little bird. Was he your husband? Is. He is my husband. But when I turned 50, he decided he wanted to trade me in on a younger model. He couldn't get a divorce without losing my money, so he cooked up a scheme to have me committed. He got Dr. Metcalf to go along, and so now he has his floozy and my money as well. Do you wonder why I'm bitter? Is that legal? Didn't you know? It's very easy to get someone committed involuntarily to a mental asylum. All it takes is two signatures and your rights are gone. Be careful, young man. This could happen to you. Can't someone get you out? Once you have been branded insane, the world looks at you differently. If you write letters, no one answers. If you make telephone calls, no one listens. Admit it. Even you aren't sure whether or not to believe me. Do you remember the ECT treatments? Oh, how could anyone forget? They would take you down to the basement and open the door with a key that looked as if it could unlock the Bastille. Then they shoved a piece of rubber in your mouth and attached some wires to your head. The orderlies would hold you down. Then the shock would come. Like a white hot steel bar behind your eyes. Ten dentists drilling on exposed nerves couldn't cause this much pain. Do you know anything about a secret room? I have some information that may help you. But first, I want you to help me. You've proven adept at recovering items that Malcolm has stolen from me. I would like you to recover the item that means more to me than anything else. It is a locket. It's hanging from the circuit board. I doubt that Malcolm would leave something so precious lying about in such a manner. Where do you think Malcolm hid the locket? There is a wall safe in Malcolm's office, behind the picture of his wife. There was a trick to opening it. He would press a certain spot on the frame. It would make a peculiar, hollow sound, and then the picture would swing open. I believe the locket is in there. Fancy. Hmm. Pretty handy for seeing if someone's sneaking up behind you. Doesn't look too useful. Huh, liquid eyeliner. Fancy.
Thank you, but I still lack a pen. Thank you. With both pen and ink, I can now write to Elizabeth. Oh, if only I had the handkerchief as well. It sounds the same all over.
I'd offer you a chair, son, but I don't think you'd want it. The name's Nick. Glissers were used by the medical staff to evacuate the bowels of the patients. That's a polite way of saying they stuck it up your behind and squeezed. Lancets and scarificators were used to bleed the patients. It was believed that doing so would bring their bodily humors back into balance. Bull hockey! They did it to keep us weak so we couldn't fight back. I'd strap you in that thing, lower the box over your head, and just leave you there. I'd cut a hole in the seat so you could crap. The women were lucky, they'd pee straight down, but the men pissed all over themselves because they couldn't get their hands free. I don't do that. That's not even a good joke. Howdy. Were you an inmate? Yeah. <laughs> you mean what am I in for? I'm just old is all. I forget things. My wife died, my kids didn't know what to do with me. So I ended up here. Did they know what it's like in here? Are you nuts? You think I'd tell them that? They've done the best they could by me. They deserve to get on with their lives. Everybody's gotta die somewhere. I told them old Nick Brennan was doing fine. How did you get by? The first thing is, don't let them see you cry. They'll think you're depressed and start pouring pills down your throat faster than you can say Jack Robinson. Any other tips? Don't turn your back on that Metcalf guy. He talks civilized, but he's got a mean streak a mile wide. Did they know what they were doing? Are you kidding? They were shooting in the dark and we were the far wall. They didn't have a clue why people go haywire. Anybody got cured around here, it was because they were desperate to get away from the quacks. That's where they'd catch your blood when they open your vein. You got no idea what it's like to sit there and watch your blood drain out, knowing if the orderly doesn't come back in time, you'll bleed to death. Take two swallows of that Ipecac, and your lunch will be on the floor in no time. Add a pulgite. It'll stop you up like a potato up your tailpipe. I don't know what's in that one, and I don't want to find out. That's where they keep all the medicines. They pretended it was scientific, but me, I think it was just mix and match. I remember Dr. Metcalf used to keep some kind of key in one of them drawers. I knew it was important, so I made up a way so I wouldn't forget. But all I remember now is the name Mandy Lee. It must have meant something to me at the time, but now I forget what it was. Now don't do that, it'll take you all night to root through them drawers. Think, man, think! Mandy Lee, it must mean something.
Welcome to the big time, baby. This is where we separate the men from the boys. The basic stethoscope has changed surprisingly little through the years. It is believed that this one belonged to the superintendent himself. Mouth guards were provided for the comfort of the patients. My ass! Those things go across your chest, not your arms, see? Because when the volts hit, you spasm so bad, your arms would break. So an orderly stands on each side, and those guys were mean bastards, too. Ah, oh, they punch you in the gut when the doctors weren't looking. It's the most fiendish torture device ever conceived by the mind of man. I've done the Hydra, solitary, fever therapy, the works. I'd rather do them all at the same time than sit in that chair for 10 seconds. You're not listening to me, friend. Sitting in that chair opens up the gates of hell. Well, look what the cat dragged in. What did you do? That's the outside. Forget at the outside. The game's in here, and if you lose, you lose it all. It seems too serious for that. If you don't treat it like a game, you'll go crazy. It's all you against the system. Don't give up. Never say die. Don't you dare let the bastards win. The truth is, they're not that smart. So it's not too hard to outthink them. Except Metcalf. He's the smart one. Isn't the game rigged? They think they're holding all the cards. And they are. But that doesn't mean you can't flip over the table. <laughs> it sounds like you're proud of yourself. You're damn right I'm proud. I took every punch those turds could throw and came right back for more. They never licked Jack Kramer, and they knew it. Did they all fight back? Nah, most of them didn't have it in them. I remember one morning they found a woman in the ward hanging with her head wedged between the transom and the doorframe. They never figured out how she got there. I did it. It was an act of mercy. I wish someone had the guts to do the same for me. Her last words before I pulled away the chair, you know what they were? God bless you. Did you ever get out? You sit in that chair with the electrodes clamped to your skin. And between the shocks, there's this strange odor. And then you realize that the last smell that's in your nostrils as you die is the stink of your own flesh burning. No, I didn't win. Nobody won. That's the frequency machine. They got a guy stands there who turns the dials so they don't match the numbers behind your head. 
If they do match, some kind of resonance thing happens. The machine blows a gasket, and they gotta go to Boston to fix it. That's to catch the puke. Some guys really spew when the volts hit them. That was taken on your third birthday. It's you and your sister Mallory. The day you were born was the most important day of my life. found a hole in the wall, Dad. Maybe I can make it bigger. You're a good boy, Josh. I'm proud of you. It is a Fabergé egg. It looks delicate, but if you don't know the trick to opening it, it would take quite a bit of pressure to get it to crack. It's just an ordinary box. I don't know why that woman insists on calling it a casket. It is a Fabergé egg. It looks delicate, but if you don't know the trick to opening it, 
it would take quite a bit of pressure to get it to crack. The word you seek is the thing itself. It's just an ordinary box. I don't know why that woman insists on calling it a casket. It's locked. I guess that's not the one. You sure you know what you're doing? They all look kind of the same. You can see how I'd forget, can't you? That's it? Now I remember. How could I forget my own daughter's address? It's just an ordinary box. I don't know why that woman insists on calling it a casket. So you found it at last. Better hurry and get it back to Vi before she decides she's Joan of Arc. Each of these vials contains a highly concentrated dose of a lethal biotoxin. One is snake venom, one is bubonic plague, the third is typhus, and the last is malaria. Unfortunately, without the labels, it is impossible to determine which is which. I wonder which you are injecting yourself with at this very moment. I'm sure you'll know soon. The concentration is such that the symptoms appear almost instantly. And if you don't administer the correct antidote within a few hours, you will certainly die.
You are a loyal friend. My thanks for returning to me that which was stolen. One of the poisons has entered my body and I need to counteract it. Sir George had another box in which he kept the antidotes, but alas, I, I do not know where he kept it. I have a gift for you. You are shivering, Oliver. That must be the first symptom of the biotoxin making its appearance. What is it? I have been saving a file to saw through the window bars that I might escape on the day the King of Spain sends his soldiers. Now that I can write to Elizabeth, I will no longer need it, for I know I can rely on her clemency. Take it with my blessing. When you find your son, use it to escape this foul prison. How might I find this file? It is concealed in a clever panel on my bedpost. Press the crown, and you will find it inside. Did Sir George ever speak of a special hiding place? The prisoner next door once told me she saw our jailer emerge from a false door, but I have not seen this myself. There. That should work. Do you still feel ill? I know there are those who believe I'm not in my right mind. But my world here is what I have made it, only because the real world is so much harsher. Please do not judge me for creating the best play play I can. Do you understand where you really are? I understand that I am not free. I understand I cannot walk among the flowers and trees, nor sit on the hill at sunset and wait for the stars to appear. I cannot move without people watching. When, I, when I'm allowed to speak, my words are examined for hidden meanings. I understand I must obey orders and ask permission almost to breathe. All my life, I dreamed of setting aside my responsibilities, of having others make decisions for me. Now that this dream has become reality, I understand how foolish I was to give up my freedom.
Do you have a bit of a headache, Oliver? That's the second biotoxin symptom. You really should do something about that, you know. Doesn't budge. That got cold in a hurry. sparking to beat the band. It's a wonder the thing hasn't melted with all that current running through it. <clears throat> it's heavier than it looks. You're limping, Oliver. Muscle pains. The third symptom. Smart move, lad. Very good, Oliver. Unfortunately, the locket is an item that encourages ill-advised activities. Where are you going now? The clock tower to throw yourself off? The cistern to drown yourself? I don't know why you're doing this to yourself, Oliver. It really isn't necessary, you know. So it's to be electric shock this time. 
Awfully dangerous, Oliver. If it doesn't kill you outright, it will probably leave you a vegetable for life. Quite painful, too. Why can't you be more reasonable and just do as I ask? Commencing countdown, Doctor. Come on now, think. Ninety seconds. The minimum amount of energy necessary to trigger a convulsion is also sufficient to cause minor brain, brain damage that results in amnesia, acute cerebral hemorrhages, and ongoing concomitant problems. Congratulations, Oliver. You have lived to fight another day. Thank you. You cannot know what this means to me. What did he want with it? It was engraved M.M., which were both his initials and mine. He took a fancy to it and decided to steal it and give it to his secret lover, that Hartwick woman. You said you had some information. One day, I walked into Malcolm's office just as he was pushing in a book on his bookshelf. As he did so, an entire section of the shelf swung open, and I could see into a dark room beyond. What did it look like? I didn't see much, but it looked like some kind of a storeroom. What did Malcolm do? He immediately pulled the book back into line with the others and then took me down to the ECT room. He gave me an extra dose of the shock treatment, hoping it would erase my memory. Do you remember anything else? He asked me about it later, but I pretended to have forgotten everything. What was the title? I couldn't see, but there was more than one. Then, as he took me down to the basement, he kept talking about the four greatest minds in medical history and what they had in common. It seemed quite important to him.
On the Uses of the Parts of the Body of Man by Galen of Pergamum. Fractures, Dislocations, and Wounds by Hippocrates. Al-Hawi by Al-Razi. Vesalius, De Humane Corporis Fabrica. On Aphasia by Freud. William Harvey's essay on the motion of the heart and the blood. Carolus Linnaeus, Systema Naturae. Der Grossen von Darsny by Paracelsus. The Physiology of Psychosis by Metcalf. Avicenna's Canon of Medicine. You said it would be soon, Dad. It's been a long time. I'm sorry, Josh. I know it's hard. I'm doing the best I can. So, Oliver, you are making progress. Why don't you stop? Can't you see what is happening? Don't you know that you are more alive than you've been in years? The fear has made you strong. Why don't you just tell me where the secret room is? Why do you fight me, Oliver? Don't you see how fear and pain have helped you solve these problems? With every step, you are coming closer to me. If you fail, you will die. But you should at least be satisfied that I will train your son in your place. I will never give in. I see that the time you have spent here has not had the desired effect. Very well. Against my better judgment, I will help discipline you. There. I have removed the elevator handle to focus you more closely on the task at hand. Remember, remember Oliver, you have only until dawn. Solid metal. If the entire hospital burned down, that door would still be standing. It's locked. I bought it in Brazil at the same time as the box you found in the safe. Not afraid of a little needle, are you, Oliver? This is streptomycin, which is used to combat bubonic plague. The vial contains chloramphenicol, an antibiotic that is effective against typhus. Quinine. Take it if you believe the neurotoxin was malaria. That is antivenin. If you think the toxin was snake venom, then this is the vial you should choose. It seems you almost lost your balance there for a second, Oliver. Feeling a little dizzy? Nauseous too, huh? Your symptoms should make it obvious by now which biotoxin has poisoned you. Shivering? Headaches, muscle pain, nausea. If you do not administer the antidote quickly, you will die very soon. This is streptomycin, which is used to combat bubonic plague.
Are you sure about your choice, Oliver? Or are you still in doubt? It doesn't matter, I suppose. You'll learn the results quickly enough. Medical texts. Even with all the shelves in my office, I never seem to find room for all my books. Hello? Dr. Metcalf? Is anyone there? I am scared. Pay no attention to the boy. Oh, don't worry. He can't hear me. Only you. I won't hurt you. Okay. It's been a long time since anyone came to visit me. What's your name? Well, my mom called me Abby. But after I came here, they said that couldn't be my name anymore. How old are you? Six and a half, but I'll be seven next month. He's just a little younger than you. Does he like to play with dolls? He likes Batman, and he has some toy soldiers. I have a doll, except she's missing right now. What does it look like? Not it, her. Her name is Samantha. She looks just like my mom. She has long brown hair and a pretty red dress. What happened to her? I don't know, but I sure miss her. I hope you find her. You sound nice. Would you like to play a game? What games do you know? I know, let's play I Spy. I'll go first. I Spy with my little eye. Something that begins with T. Now you try to guess what it is. Yay, you got it. Okay, here's another one. I spy with my little eye. Something that begins with L. That's it. And you know, even with that light on, it sure is dark in here. Not like the chapel upstairs. How come? It's nice and quiet. I like to go there when I'm getting better after my operations. 
I like the pretty glass with windows and the nice music. That sounds hard. Dr. Metcalf is trying to make me better. There's a part inside me that means it's sick, and he keeps trying to find, find it and cut it out. He doesn't know what it is. It's really, really nice to keep trying, though. How many operations have you had? I'm not sure. There's somewhere they need to cut me open, and somewhere they don't. Since I don't have legs anymore, they have to carry me around. And someone has to feed me now, too. Do you know what it's called? They won't tell me. They say I'm too young to understand, but I think I know. I'm sick because my mom wanted me to be a girl. Or are you a girl? A boy, of course. I was never confused. Only my mom was. She really wanted to have a girl. She used to put me in dresses and brush my hair and call me Abby. I just pretended with her to make her happy. Did you ever try to tell him? He isn't a good listener. Not like you. Why does that mean you're sick? You have to ask him that. I guess if you pretend something to make someone else happy, it means you're sick. What does it sound like? There's an old man who comes and plays the organ. His name is Mr. Morgan. I don't know how to get inside. Oh, it's easy. Just ask one of the attendants. They've got these big key rings, and the key to the chapel is always the biggest one on the ring. Sometimes they let me open it myself. Henry Cotton, our greatest authority on the focal infection theory. A brilliant man. That is where the image appears when the machine is switched on. You've stopped shivering, Oliver. Perhaps now is a good time to tell you that choosing streptomycin to get rid of your bubonic plague was a smart move. My diploma from the Sorbonne. Dr. Metcalf is the only one who knows how to work it. He never lets anyone else push the buttons. I performed some of my most brilliant surgery on that table. Scrubbing up was always the most tedious part of performing surgery. Leave it, Oliver. One day, a real surgeon might use this place again. You're not going to leave me all alone, are you? I'll come back. I promise. Cross your heart and hope to die? Cross my heart and... I promise. Okay, bye. Where's mom? 
She's probably home waiting for us. She'll give you a great big hug when we get back. Welcome to the chapel. My name is Frank Morgan. I was the visiting organist. Once the ice pick was inserted below the eyelid, a few taps of this hammer were sufficient to break through into the brain. This ice pick was used by Dr. Metcalf to perform over 500 prefrontal lobotomies. Joan of Arc, burned at the stake. Quite mad, you know. Claimed she heard voices. That is Saint Adrian of Nicodemia. He was a Roman soldier who was thrown in prison for his beliefs. His legs were smashed with an anvil and they chopped off his arms with an axe. He's a patron saint of prison warders. Saint Christopher. He was thrashed with an iron rod, then a red-hot helmet was put over his head, and he was beheaded. He's the patron saint of accidents. saint of frail and sickly children. He was tied to a tree and shot with, with hundreds of arrows. When that didn't kill him, they clubbed him to death and dumped his body into Rome's main sewer. and then was rolled naked on a bed of hot coals mixed with sharp splinters of glass. That is Saint Vincent. He was lacerated with hooks and pincers, then roasted on a grid. It's a splendid instrument, predating the asylum itself. It was imported from Germany by Charles Connolly. Welcome! It seems most of the other people I've met, met were inmates. I guess I just grew attached to this, to this wonderful old organ. Well, and of course, it couldn't be away today of all days. What's so special? 
April 23rd is the feast day of St. George. It's also Shakespeare's birthday, which altogether makes it a great day for England. And of course, there's always tomorrow. What happens then? Why, it's your birthday, Oliver. St. Mark's Eve. Did you know children born that day can see spirits and talk to ghosts? I guess you're proving the legend true. I don't believe in the supernatural. If I'm lucky, this is all a dream. If I'm not, then I'm having some kind of prolonged hallucination. It always amazes me how far people will go to close their eyes on what's all around them. Very well, Oliver. Believe what you will. It is a copy made from a painting of St. George. It's welded together. It's attached. Yay, you came back, just like you promised. Let's play more I Spy. Let's I tell. Great. I spy with my little eye something that's white. Right. Let's keep playing. I spy with my little eye something that begins with tiger. I've started a tunnel, Dad. I'm gonna dig my way out. I saw them do it on Scooby-Doo. Be careful, Josh. Don't hurt yourself. Okay, Dad. Hey, Josh. I need help with a kind of a riddle. What is it? What is something that begins with tiger? You know, like in a game of I Spy. Let me see. Tigers go grrr. How about grapes, or maybe ground? Thanks, Josh. You've been a big help. Great! Get it? A tiger goes growl. I used to be afraid of all kinds of animals. Just like the cowardly lion in the Wizard of Oz. But now I'm not afraid anymore. Do, do you? Oh yes, especially the ruby slippers. How come you're not afraid? I just pretend I made a metal like the Tin Man. Then if an animal bites me, it won't hurt. I think that's smart thinking. The operation still hurt though. But Dr. Mick isn't like an animal who's trying to hurt me. He's trying to make me better. So that's different. Is he your favorite? Nope. Scarecrow. The Tin Man has that hollow sound that's kind of scary. Like the knight in the chapel. 
You mean there's nothing in there? Sure. They used to lift up the visor and put stuff in there all the time. Then they told us we couldn't do that anymore. I like how his legs are all rubbery. I think Dorothy liked them too. Remember at the end when she said, I'll miss you most of all. That's what I said to my mom when they brought me here. That's why I want my doll so much. It reminds me of her. It's locked. A long time ago, I threw away the key for a joke, but Dr. Metcalf just uses one of his tools to open it. That's the tune Dr. Metcalf always hums when he opens that door. We have nothing to discuss, Oliver. What are you doing? Leave that alone! There's something inside that I need. <laughs> I say, your hacksaw snapped clean in two. That's the doll I was looking for. Take it with my blessing. Going for a ride, Oliver? Do be careful.
The, the problem with these spears is, is that you never know where the next one is going to come from. Good idea. You should probably hurry. Excellent, Oliver. Well done. My final resting place, or it will be as soon as this evening's work is done. <clears throat> Can't lift it. They died to advance science. It's wrong to experiment on people. We didn't experiment on them. We tried to cure them. You simply do not understand science, Oliver. You must try new things to see if they work. Otherwise, progress will never be made. You killed them. Sometimes people have to die so that others may live. These patients were unlucky. We have nothing to discuss, Oliver. I bought it in Brazil at the same time as the box you found in the safe. I've hidden that key especially for you, but I'll give you a clue where to find it. You always liked riddles, Oliver. Try this one. My office quite fast, yielded keys manifold, but you'll find the last in the one who knows cold. My doll! Thank you! Can we play one more game of I Spy? Just one? Please? But just one. Thanks! Here we go! I spy with my little eye something that's red. You figured it out! Get it? I love that joke. Anyway, you win! I think we both both won. You're fun. Thanks for playing, playing with me. Dr. Metcalf never plays with, with me. He doesn't even call me by my name. He just calls me 1225. That's strange. He says it's a code. He gets it from my nickname. What's your real name? Abraham Wagner. I guess that's why my mom called me Abby. Don't you ever get mad at Dr. Metcalf? Why? He's doing the best he can. My mom says that's all we can ever expect from someone, that he does the best he can. So that's what I try to do, too. No, no, Oliver. Never guess. You don't have enough information yet to know what this combination is. Dr. Metcalf is the only one who knows how to work it. He never lets anyone else push the buttons. Don't go down there! Bad things happen there. No, no, Oliver. Never guess. You don't have enough information yet to know what this combination is.
Da, 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 da. That's what Dr. Metcalf always hums when he opens that door. That's the tune Dr. Metcalf always hums when he opens that door. Welcome. Are there stairs? Not through here, I'm afraid. The journey you took was a one-time affair. What happened to it? You said you believed this was all in your head. Shouldn't you be asking yourself that question? That's Bach's three-part invention in F minor. You should hear that on a pipe organ. Bach certainly knew how to write. No wonder Dr. Metcalf liked him so much.
What's happening, Dad? I'm not sure, Josh, but I'm trying to fix it. And make sure to give Freddy good snuggles, okay? Okay, Dad. Hello, Oliver. I've been waiting for you. I'm glad you made it this far. After everything Malcolm has told me about you, I'd have been disappointed if I didn't get a chance to meet you. Come on over and talk to me. Or take a look around first, and I'll tell you about our setup. Really nice work, isn't it? Those Japanese really knew how to build a finger box. It was a good size for all-purpose work. Not too big, not too small. We use this mostly on teeth, but sometimes it's effective elsewhere. Well, this is one of the few tools I brought with me. I've used it since I was a kid. The rest belong to Malcolm. Over my dead body? Uh, oh, uh, well, Anyway, you can't have it. See? You found me. What is your name? I'm Paul Becker. I was an associate of your father's. What is this place? This was, this was a laboratory. I've never seen a place like this. Oh, it's not your standard Beaker and Bunsen burner kind of setup. Nevertheless, this is where we conducted our research. What did you study? Pain. Malcolm and I made revolutionary discoveries. We learned that at the root of every accepted treatment for mental illness was pain. While others saw pain as an unfortunate byproduct of, of various therapies, only Malcolm and I saw that pain was in fact the essential element to every cure. What makes you think that? If a person is mentally ill, it's because they have lost touch with their bodies. In other words, they're not in enough pain. How does it work? Hurting people brings them back to their senses. We've seen it work on a small scale, like slapping someone who's become hysterical, or, or pinching yourself when you think you're dreaming. What we discovered is that it's true on a much more profound level. Our job here was to investigate how much pain was necessary to do the job. I'm sure some of the people here told you how much they wanted to avoid some of the treatments. <laughs> That's a mark of sanity. That meant they were getting better. All you do there is talk. Nah, that's good enough for minor neuroses. Anxieties, phobias, things like that. But you'll never cure a full-fledged psychotic by talking about his dreams and why he didn't like his mother. How can pain be good for you? Actually, it's good for everyone, not just psychotics. Pain heightens consciousness. Every moment spent in pain is a moment when you are truly alive. Pain is an essential part of everyone's daily life. It doesn't make sense. Well, sure it does. And on a subconscious level, we all know it's true. You see it every day. When you touch a hot stove, you pull your hand back quickly. If you didn't feel the pain, your hand would burn up. When a child runs into the street, you spank him. The pain teaches him the lesson your words couldn't. Pain is all around us. Pain is good. You're insane. Well, I guess that's why they locked me up in the first place. But calling me names doesn't disprove the theory. You should give it some thought. Why didn't he work alone? Believe it or not, he was always a little squeamish when it came to the uh, practical application of the theory. I, on the other hand, enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. Before my lobotomy, I had already done quite a few experiments of my own. So Malcolm didn't actually hurt people himself? <laughs> Still looking to defend your old man, eh? Well, you remember that nutcracker you liked so much as a kid? Let me just say that nuts weren't the only thing Malcolm used it on. <laughs> At least not the kind of nuts you're thinking of. You were locked up here? Yeah. When I was a teenager, I killed a few animals and skinned them. People got upset. They said something was wrong with me. I guess what tipped the balance is when I cut up my best friend and put him in my closet. I thought lobotomies turned people into vegetables. 
Oh, not at all. In fact, some studies show that IQ actually rises after lobotomy. The real thing a lobotomy does is deaden your emotions. I should be real upset about that, but somehow I'm not. I want Joshua back. As it turns out, I know just where he is and how you can get there. But I want to help enlighten you first, so you'll have to meet me halfway. Take that box over there. Tell me what's inside it, and then we can talk. What do you mean, enlighten? The box is a Japanese finger box. It's used in the Yakuza ritual of Yubitsami. If you stick your finger in the hole, you'll be able to feel the object inside and tell me what it is. The catch is that when you withdraw your finger, the tip will be chopped off. And what is Yubitsami? Yakuza is the name of the Japanese mafia. Yubitsami is a ritual during which you cut off the tip of your own finger to prove your loyalty to the gang. What do you think it will prove? It'll help teach you the value of pain. Your son will become more valuable to you because of the pain you have suffered to recover him. The trick here is not to let the blade cut too deeply and kill the patient. You can't cure a dead guy. Last thing each night, We'd sharpen everything up for the next day. Malcolm hated dull tools. Well, that's the spirit! Too bad I'm not there to throw the lever for you. We used to be much better stocked than this. Oh, well, we use this more to create fear than actual pain. The patient had a pretty good view of the therapies being conducted in other parts of the room. It's a simple principle. The patient is tied to the wheel. His torso is supported, but his limbs have nothing behind them. With well-aimed blows, the therapist can pinpoint which bone, or which part of a particular bone he wants to break. We almost never used it, because it caused too much damage. But it sure scared the hell out of people. Sometimes, simple is best. You can do a lot of damage with the Louisville Slugger. It's called a Judas Cradle. Been around for centuries. You suspend a naked patient in chains, adjusting his or her position until the desired body aperture is directly over the point, and then lower slowly. It's an authentic antique from the Spanish Inquisition. Believe it or not, that was very hard to use. You wouldn't think so, would you? But if you hoist someone up too quickly, you can break their neck. And if you leave them there too long, they'll asphyxiate. That's why I didn't use it too often. It was just a big pain in the neck, so to speak. Da ah Tell me what's in the finger box, and I'll tell you how to open it. Tell me about the finger box, I'll tell you about the symbols. You couldn't do it, could you? I would have heard the sound. <laughs> nice try, though. I'll be waiting for you. And don't go trying to fake the sound. The test here is whether you can tell me what's inside. Hmm. No help.
Welcome back. Anything to tell me? It's an unk. Excellent. N now, while you're still in pain and thinking clearly, let's take take last step. Malcolm has taken my stereoscope and locked it up inside the Iron Maiden. I want it back. Open the Maiden, fetch me the stereoscope, and I'll tell you how to get to the secret room. What good will it do you? We spirits are tied to this earth by our affection for a particular item. We grow uncomfortable when the item is taken from us. How can I open it? You need to push the panels on the front in a certain order. Malcolm changed the pattern frequently, so I don't know what it is right now. But I know that he kept a reminder to himself in the safe in his office. I think it's some kind of a rebus deal. Dad. Hang in there, Josh. We'll figure this out soon. Isn't it lovely? It allows you to see things the way you would like them to be. It unleashes your inner vision. Give it to me, and I'll tell you how to get to Josh. Chickened out, did you? Come on. It probably won't kill you. Stop struggling. It's only gonna hurt for a moment. Ha! Huh. As if you could reach it from there. Trust must me. Okay, it's getting closer. Any minute now. The stereoscope, you dropped it. Ah! That was quite foolish, Oliver. Paul was ready to tell you the location of the secret room. But by destroying the stereoscope, you have killed him. He was your last hope of finding Joshua in time. Oliver. Is that you? Go back to the crypt. How did you get out of your room? Before, I couldn't leave. Suddenly I could. I don't know why. I can't open the closet door behind Malcolm's study. He told me a riddle, but I don't get it. He said I'll find the key in the one who knows cold. I guess I can't help much. All I know is that hydrotherapy gave me nose colds all the time, and Dr. Metcalf always called them rhinoviruses. Maybe that will help. What's in there? That's where the entrance to the secret room is. 
a clumsy tool at best, although Paul was partial to it. I preferred scalpels myself. I was always disappointed with its results. It made me think the whine from a dentist drill creates as much fear and pain as the drill itself. Unfortunately, I never got the chance to test that hypothesis. A dull tool is like a dull mind. Neither gets the job done. Paul's design, actually. Quite clever. Sometimes the anticipation of pain is as effective as pain itself. The cage was useful for creating that anticipation. Barbaric, but it did produce results. It was more effective as a threat than as an actual device. Barbaric. We all have to die, Oliver. Who is to say that one way is worse than any other? I found it more effective with women than men. I'm not sure why. It appears your wife has come looking for you. Don't worry, I'll attend to her. She's not here anymore, Oliver. Rebecca has joined Joshua in the secret room. They're waiting for you. Dad, Mom's here. And she's hurt. She's unconscious or something. Is she bleeding? I don't think so. She just won't wake up. Try to stay calm, Josh. I'll be there real soon. I'll let her snuggle, Freddy. Maybe that'll make her feel better. Your grandfather was quite the hunter. I never cared for blood sports myself.
Open the sarcophagus, Oliver. Open your father's tomb. Your queen commands you. Get inside the sarcophagus, Oliver. Don't be afraid. It's the only way. It is all that remains of my earthly form. The rest has disintegrated. Too late, Oliver. They are not here. You have refused to see things my way, so I have begun to train Joshua, as I warned you I would. Once I am sure he is mine, you will no longer be of value. It saddens me to kill you. I have done my best as a parent to educate you, and clearly I have not succeeded. I genuinely regret that we could not have been, been closer. I know I have failed you in some way, but I also know that you have failed me. Goodbye, Oliver. Dad, Grandpa came and got us. I'm sick, but Grandpa told me how to wake her up. I might have to hurt her a little, but Grandpa says it's okay. Listen to me, Joshua. Go up to the attic and open the box at the top of the stairs. I'm not supposed to go up there by myself. It's all right, Joshua. There's something up there that will make your mom better. Well, okay. It is all that remains of my earthly form. The rest has disintegrated. After all Malcolm did to that poor boy, now this. Take it, if you think it'll help. Now's not the time for frills and lace, lad. Is this okay, Dad? Don't worry about your dad, Joshua. He can't help you right now. But together, you and I will make sure that your mom gets better. That's Elizabeth McGuire, your first victim as the Dark Figure. Don't you remember, Oliver? Jules Hartwick. You incinerated Martha Ward alive. She was a nasty woman. She deserved to die. Rebecca Morrison. She should be dead by now, too. Raymond Wong. We never got to him. Take the small case and bring it downstairs. Is this the one? That's the one, Joshua. Now be careful with it. It has a very sharp razor inside. Troublemaker. Ed Becker was nothing but a troublemaker. Malcolm means to destroy all of us. You must destroy him first. No, 
No more games. You will stay here. Joshua will become mine. And you will die. Be quiet, Oliver. I'm concentrating. You were right to kill her. Jermaine Wagner should have been dead years ago. I don't like this. I know it's hard, Joshua. But it's the only way to help your mother. When Joshua is mine, Jim Montanus is the first one I'll send him after. That's Elizabeth McGuire, your first victim as the Dark Figure. Don't you remember, Oliver? Jules Hartwick. You probably don't remember, but that's a tunnel to your house. It comes up behind a secret panel in your cellar. Look your last, Oliver. Soon you and your friends will all be dead. Won't it hurt her? Sometimes you have to hurt people in order to help them get better. It's one of the hard parts of being a doctor. Look your last, Oliver. Soon you and your friends will all be dead. You incinerated Martha Ward alive. She was a nasty woman. She deserved to die. Rebecca Morrison. She should be dead by now, too. Raymond Wong. We never got to him. Troublemaker. Ed Becker was nothing but a troublemaker. I'm scared. I'm scared. Daddy, I don't want to do this. It's the only way, Joshua. Do it on the count of three. You were right to kill her. Jermaine Wagner should have been dead years ago. When Joshua is mine, Jim Montanus is the first one I'll send him after. That's Elizabeth McGuire, your first victim as the Dark Figure. Don't you remember, Oliver? Jules Hartwick. 
you incinerated Martha Ward alive. She was a nasty woman. She deserved to die. One, two, three. Mama! No, Oliver. I am the master here. What are you doing? Stop! That was foolish, Oliver. The sneaky bastard! His spirits moved to the damn journal! He doesn't seem as strong as he was before. Stop, Oliver. No more. I'm warning you. The skull! The skull! He's in the skull! Each object you destroy seems to reduce his power. Dad, Grandpa came and got us. I'm sick, but Grandpa told me how to wake her up. Listen to me, Joshua. Go up to the attic and open the box at the top of the stairs. I'm not supposed to go up there by myself. It's all right, Joshua. There's something up there that will make your mom better. Well, okay. I warned you, Oliver. Is this okay, Dad? Don't worry about your dad, Joshua. He can't help you right now. But together, you and I will make sure that your mom gets better. Soon Joshua will be mine. Then I will deal with you. Take the small case and bring it downstairs. Is this the one? That's the one, Joshua. Now be careful with it. It has a very sharp razor inside. Good luck, Oliver. I don't like this. I know it's hard, Joshua, but it's the only way to help your mother. Where's Dad, Mom? He just went out for a little while. He'll be back soon. I had a really bad dream. It's okay, Josh. Sometimes we have bad dreams, and it's hard to tell whether they're real or not. I was scared. I know, but Mommy and Daddy love you, and everything is fine. See? Here he is now. I love you, Dad. I love you too, Josh. Don't worry. The bad guys are gone now. It's all over. No one will ever hurt you again. <laughs>